Hello and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to talk about how you can use Asana to reduce or even eliminate the need to have meetings within your team. Or if you do need to have a meeting, how you can actually use Asana to better plan, prepare and actually run the meeting so that it's uh, used more, uh, the, the meeting is more productive, you get more out of it, you stay on track and more importantly, you actually take action as a result of that meeting. So I'm going to show you a few different methods for doing that in this video. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Otherwise, please look in the description below this video if you need more help with Asana. You can use the link in the description to apply for help with uh, consulting. And if you want to get a discount on your annual uh, membership to Asana Premium, you can use the details in the description below to get a 10% discount on top of the current discount that you get. So let's get into this video. Firstly, let's just talk about meetings in general, first of all. I think firstly, meeting, meetings are a love-hate thing. We love them because they make us feel productive. It makes us feel like we're doing work. Um, but actually, more often than not, meetings are often a waste of time because we get into those meetings, we go off topic, uh, we don't necessarily come out with a clear list of action items. And so in general, meetings uh, can produce a lot of wasted time. So. Some ways that you can use Asana to reduce or eliminate the meet need for meetings. Well, firstly, think about why do we meet in the first place? Usually the need to meet arises from the fact that we need some kind of update or clarity on what people are doing, where we're at with a project right now, and we need to kind of plan ahead. And Asana can actually help us to do all of those things. So. For like things like a one-on-one -on -one meeting, if you just want to catch up with someone, maybe it's like a manager in an employee relationship, you've got a one-on-one, -on -one, and if you just want to see what that person is doing, one of the easy ways to do that is to just look at their My Tasks. So you can actually just click someone's icon here from the sidebar, or you can search for someone by name, and you can just find their name, and uh, you can just go and look at their tasks. Now, you're going to have visibility to see any tasks that you have permission to see. So you're part of the same projects and teams. Now, if they have private projects, you're obviously not gonna see that work. So you do need to take into account like the permission settings as well. But just clicking on someone's name and seeing their workload, this is a very quick way to just see what someone is working on. Now, obviously this does rely on people using Asana consistently and putting their work in here. So you do need to establish some expectations for this method to work. Another way of keeping up to date with what's going on, if you look at a project, uh, one of these often underused features is the progress tab. And the purpose of this page is for the project manager to update the other members of the project on how things are going. So I can post a status update here. I can set a color to specify if the project is on track or not. And so you can see here's like a recent update. I've said, you know, the content calendar has been filled out. We've got sponsors lined up and I'd just like to focus on doing a few more interviews. So other members of this project can come here and they can see how the project is going. And so by looking here, it potentially reduces or eliminates the need to meet about how this project is going. So why would you then need to meet? Well, I think meetings should be focused um, on more strategic planning. I think tactical stuff like can you do this um, or you know assigning tasks, that can all just be done in Asana. You can just assign small little tactical things to one another. But when you are um, planning more strategically and planning big goals and long term, obviously that's a good time when you might need to meet and chat. So how can you run meetings using Asana? I think there, well, there's three main ways that I want to show you in this video. The first method, the really quick and easy way of doing it, is you can just use the conversations area of a project. So some people just wanna get into a meeting really quickly and they can just record their meeting notes right here. So you could name the conversation something like, you know, today's date. I don't know, what is it today, 18th? And I could say meeting notes. And then during the meeting, I could just write my notes directly in here. And then maybe I flick on over to the list and I could set up tasks within this project as I go. Um, and so yeah, just recording your notes here is a very quick and easy way of recording your notes and, and adding tasks to, um, to your project. And so often people will just run meetings by clicking and going through each project, writing notes, adding tasks, and just assessing how are we doing with each of these tasks. So this, this is a nice method because there's nothing to set up. The other way that you can do it is you can use a project. So I've actually created a project here, Q1 meeting agenda. Now I've actually created this using the inbuilt template in Asana. So if I go to new up here, project, there's actually a an Asana da, 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 meeting agenda. This is the one that I've used. There's also a one-on-one -on -one meeting agenda as well. 
And so this is what you get. You can see there's sections for the agenda, suggestions, discussion topics. I would even add to this and put in action items here as well. And so I think this is a nice approach for bigger meetings, maybe things that are maybe like a quarterly meeting, um, something more formal that you want to record. For things like a weekly meeting, I personally feel that this project approach is a little bit overkill. I don't think you necessarily need an entire project for a weekly meeting. And I think it, you, you run the risk of having a lot of, um, a lot of projects in your sidebar if you're not consistent about archiving them. So my preferred method, in fact, is to have a task as a meeting. So here is a, I'm gonna just make this full screen. Here is a task, and I've actually put this into a project, you know, sales, and so I, that's, that's where I'm gonna, you know, you can, you can put your meeting tasks wherever you need to, really. You could index it into the multiple projects that it's about. And so I've just, again, I've given it a name, like the day, today's date and then the kind of subject of the meeting. During the meeting, I can record meeting notes in the description. Uh, before the meeting, I can actually plan my agenda here. And a good way of doing this as well would be maybe if I add followers down here, I can add other people to the meeting and I can say, hey, make sure you add anything that you want to talk about in the meeting today to the agenda. So everyone can contribute to that agenda. And uh, finally, you can list action items down the bottom here. So this is great during the meeting. You can say, right, what are we going to do? You can list those action items. And I would even take this a step further. What I would do is click into these subtasks. And if I want to add this particular action item to a project, you can come up here and you can come move task, add to project, or you can use the shortcut tab P. And now I could add it to a project. So if I put this in business, it's still a subtask. So it's really nice because it's still recorded as an action item for the meeting, but it's actually now put in the actual project so I can see it at kind of that higher level within Asana. And so it's just gonna make it really obvious like these are the things that we need to do. And it's just nice because then I can look back at this task later and I can see, you know, did we do those action items? A quick note on this, with these sections, uh, Asana has recently changed the way that sections work. And so it used to be that you could type a word and put a colon at the end and that would format it as a section. Uh, that is no more the case. It now is the case that you need to use the shortcut tab N and that will create a section. So that's tab N. Um, you can't use the colon approach anymore. Um, it's a slight change that they made recently. So if you are gonna use this approach and you wanna set up your meeting template, um, you have to use that tab N to create these sections. And one final thing I'll show you with this template is when you want to duplicate this and use it for the next meeting, you can do that right up here. So you can go duplicate task, you can rename it. So you can use this template again and again and again for your meetings. So there you are. Those are three ways that I um, you, you can run meetings in Asana. Um, like I said, you might chop and change and use different methods for um, different things. I've even seen people who, you know, they use the conversations for um, maybe keeping notes with clients if they have a specific project that they work on with a client of theirs, um, whereas they do the task or project approach when having more internal meetings. But yeah, hopefully this gives you some ideas of a few different ways that you can reduce meetings uh, and cut them out altogether. And then when you do need those meetings, you can actually make them a lot more productive and keep people on task. So like I said, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and check out the description below this video to get details of uh, discounts on Asana Premium and my consulting services. And thank you very much for watching this video.